Okay, it's day three, and um, things are going very nicely. Um, I've uh, accomplished everything I needed to so far, and I'm on good track to get probably most of it done today, if possible. Um, I now have filtered the honey almost completely. These two buckets have honey filtered all the way through the 200 micron uh, strainer, which is complete, and the next step would be bottling. This one here, an interesting thing happened. This is uh, still 400 microns, and um, there's about a third of a bucket here. And what happened was I put the uh, honey in, in the uh, 200 micron strainer and went off to do something yesterday evening, thinking it would go through. And this morning, I uh, came down, and it was all still almost entirely in the strainer. And what happens there, and this was my, my carelessness, basically, uh, it's important to clean the strainers every so and so often after you filter a certain amount of honey because there's a little bit of debris that gets stuck. And when you're talking about the 200 micron strainer, any tiny thing that gets in there can block the flow of the honey. And that's what happened, basically, it was totally blocked, the surface of the strainer, and no, none of the honey was going through. So that was a little bit difficult because I had to carefully lift this strainer out. They're not very um, rigid, so they kind of deform when you lift them, and there's, there was probably 10 pounds of honey in it. And I had to very carefully pour it back into the bucket um, that has the 400 uh, micron strained honey in it. That went pretty well, and... I cleaned the strainer out, but on top of that, what I'm going to do is to decrease the viscosity a little bit of the honey. You don't want to actually heat it up with, uh, you know, a range or anything, because that can change the, the molecular structure and the taste. But one thing you can do is put it out in the sun if you want. I don't really care to do that, because that's going to attract the bees. So what I've decided to do is take it up and put it in my attic, and I'll leave it there for maybe half a day. Hopefully that'll soften up the honey. And with a nice, clean 200 micron strainer, I can finish the job. That's, that's the plan. Uh, in the meantime, I've got a couple of other things I'm going to be doing. These three uh, boxes in the background, these three uh, supers that I had extracted for the past two days, they're ready to go back on the hives. And I do that for two reasons. First of all, uh, because there is some residual honey left there, which I want the bees to benefit from but also because there's that beautiful drawn-out comb that's going to be a great um, foundation for them to continue through into the fall and also next year if I'm lucky enough to have the bees then. Um, to do that, I have to take off some uh, temporary boxes I put on the hives because when I removed these three, I was concerned with lots of bees in both colonies. I wanted to make sure they had enough real estate um, for these two or three days to be comfortable there. So I put some other boxes on that really don't have very good frames, and that was just to give them space. I want to take those off now. I have to blow those bees out of those three boxes and then, um, and then put these on. So it's a little bit of a process, but it's worth the effort because I want to get the right boxes on as we move into the fall. And then... Uh, Another thing I'm going to be doing, which is one of actually my most favorite things in the whole process, is uh, what you have to do, of course, before returning this borrowed equipment to the club is clean it. The first few, uh, the first few years that I did this, of course, I very dutifully uh, you know, cleaned it all with soap and water myself. But then a, a more experienced beekeeper told me that there's a much better and, and ingenious way. And that is to let the bees clean it. And it's truly amazing. Uh, I just take it out um, and put it in my bee yard and leave it there for sort of 24 hours. And they will just uh, totally take over and remove all of the honey uh, from all of these items. So I'm going to be taking this, cap this drainage bin uh, with the wax cappings and the one, the one underneath, which has some residual honey. I'll be taking the drum out, which I've actually carefully cleaned out as much as I can, but I'm going to be taking that out for them to get the rest of it. And then also, the spinning mechanism itself, 
uh, which I was able to disassemble and remove, but it's still coated with honey. All of this stuff will go into the yard, and it'll just sit there, and they will take care of it. Uh, one thing you do need for this to work out, of course, is nice weather. If, it, if it's raining or if it's extremely windy, uh, that's a problem. I'm extremely fortunate, I think, to have uh, not one but two days of clear blue skies and actually really hot weather. It's in the mid-90s today and apparently tomorrow. This is terrific. It's exactly the weather I need for this particular part of the process. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'll turn the video off now, um, but I think the next one is going to be the bottling process. So we're, get, we're getting toward the end of uh, what seems to be about a three-day process.